uh, welcome back to the NPTEL lecture series on uh, animal physiology. So, we are in section 6, where we are essentially dealing with the uh, blood cells immunity and clotting. So, I give you an introduction by introducing the topic with red blood cells. Then we talked about the clotting factors involving platelets. Then we talked about how these different blood cells, the red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets are originated and uh, what are the different components of blood in terms of plasma, plasma component which is the fluidic component with suspended proteins, um, electrolytes, organic molecules, organic waste which it, the blood collects all the time and dump it out. And then we talked about the formed element in the form of the different cell types which are present there. And in the case of the genesis of the blood cells, we talked about how from the stem cells, there are two sets of cells which are from, which are the myeloid origin and the lymphoid origin. And from the lymphoid root, it leads to the formation of the lymphocytes, which are one of the white blood cells. And in the myeloid uh, track, it leads to the formation of RBCs platelets from megakaryocyte, the breaking down of the megakaryocytes, so the fragmentation of the megakaryocytes. And then we talked about the formation of neutrophil, which is a <coughs> white blood cell, monocyte, basophil, eosinophil. So, these different names of white blood cells, what they got, you know, eosinophil, basophil, neutrophil, how they got all these names. So, today what we will do, we will talk about the white blood cells and once we are done with the white blood cells, our next objective will be to understand about the blood grouping, how the blood grouping takes place and what are the influence of blood grouping. And in between we will talk a little bit after once we finish the white blood cells, we will talk about the different forms of immunity, that is all we will be covering in that part. We will not go in depth with immunity, because that is outside the purview of this course. So, we will just touch upon the base. and rest you people can really, if any one of you is interested can, I can suggest some of the books through which you can, you can go through those books and that will give you a much detailed um, study of immunity. Okay. So, coming back to the white blood cells. So, we have already discussed the white blood cells have two sets of origin, a myeloid origin and a lymphoid origin. Okay. So, across. Uh, white blood cells as I told you, the, I have already shown this, uh, shown this layout, lymphoid origin and myeloid origin. Okay. And within myeloid origin, you have four different types and here you have lymphocytes, lymphocytes and I told you that lymphocytes from T cells, from B cells and it from NK cells, which is also called uh, natural killer cells. Okay. So, this is natural killer cells, I did not show you in the last, uh, the whole flow chart of the genesis of the double, uh, of the blood and specifically with uh, respect to white blood cells. And on the myeloid origin, we will be talking about the neutrophils, neutrophils, eosinophil, basophil and you have monocytes. Typically, if you take 1 microliter of blood samples, typically you get around 6000, 7000 odd white blood cells, which is distributed among these 5 different cell types, neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil, lymphocytes, 
likewise okay so what are the functions so first of all we'll talk about what are the different functions of the and what are the different features of these white blood cells one of the feature of these white blood cells i have already shown you they're the kind of huge size and they are also called polymorphonuclear poly means many morpho morphological features nuclear so morphologically they have multiple nuclei so whenever you see under the um, under the microscope if you do a smear and you see essentially they look like more like one second let me save this they will mostly they will look like this so this is what is meant by polymorphonuclear poly many morpho the look morpho nuclear these cells have a very interesting features you see this huge cell out there these cells can change their shape they can show a lot of amoeboid kind of movement you have heard about amoeba it's one of the lower organisms you know they they change their shape they move through so in other word what happens it's like a Let me give an example. How I mean, something like which is sponge kind of. So, if the vessel size, say for example, it is flowing through a vessel of this diameter, then the vessel size goes smaller. So that they change their shape, they become more like you know elongated. So, in other words, they have the feature like this. Of suppose, say for example, they're traveling through the vessel like this, and then the vessel becomes like this. Essentially, they change their shape, and they become their new shape becomes something like this. they will travel so they show something called amoeboid movement this is one of their classic feature they have a amoeboidic movement which could be observed the second thing they have the ability to move out of the blood vessels because if they cannot do so then they cannot reach the site of as i have already told you they are involved in immunity so that is their major function okay so for the immunity for its immune action suppose say for example uh okay try that will make more sense so for example you have a blood vessels out here okay and you have a pathogen sitting out here somewhere okay which is significantly distant from it, the blood vessel so what they these cells will essentially do is they will they will start moving towards it they will come out of the blood vessel and they will start moving towards it and this movement of course since they are moving so this is your this is where the pathogen or the infection is sitting and these are your wbc streaming to the site of pathogen and here you have the blood vessel where the blood is flowing okay so they have the tendency to or they have the, they have the ability tendency is a wrong word they have the ability to come out of the blood vessel and move to the site of infection or site of injury where they are being needed so having said this you have to realize if they have to come out of the blood vessel if you remember while i was showing you the structure of the blood vessel their form of the endothelial lining so if i had to blow up this image what i drew for you if i blow up this image so the blood vessel structure will be more like this you remember i talked about fenestrated capillaries and all those things so there is a very very little gap out here very teeny tiny gap from which something can come out so for a cell like this which has to come out through this then it has to change its shape significantly it may have to take a shape like this before it can come out so that is the reason why i highlighted this point that they have a tendency they can they have a they have the ability so in other word if you have to change the shape that much it means the cytoskeletal protein which is making the framework of that cell 
is different from others, because you are squeezing your shape. They are very, very smart cells. Okay, they are changing their shape like like this to like this, like this, elongated. They can pierce through. They can move through. So these are very, very smart structures, which can modulate their shape based on the situation. And this is one of the hallmark of these cells. Second thing. So, say for example, they have to reach to the site. So, here is a white blood cell and it has to reach somewhere out here. Okay. Here is the pathogen is almost. So, these cells have the tendency just like the transmitters you know you receive signal some signals is coming. They could receive the chemical signal and they, they have a tendency to a positive or a negative chemotaxis. Chemotaxis means you are moving towards something in response to a chemical. Okay, there is a chemical sitting here and then it is sending out some kind of stimulus, which could be sensed by these cells and they start streaming like this as if the army gets a signal and then from a GPS they get a signal okay, there you have to attack and the army started crawling through there to that site. So, this is how they move and this is very very tightly regulated and this is something amazing the way they move to the site and then they could you know kind of you know uh, imagine I um, mean think of a uh, think of a very old city okay where there are a lot of alleys lot of roads and through which the army is moving through okay something like that just the way they you know crawl through those of you who have seen like you know some movies like uh, which i can give you a day to day example like uh, those who have seen black hawk down if you see the city of mogadishu how they and they, they are moving through all those you know curves and crevices of a city it's exactly the same way the white blood cells have the ability to move through and go to the site and capture onto the pathogen and if they fail to do so we won't be alive okay so this is one of their so they have this chemotaxis kind of process they could really crawl through they could move to the site and they can sit on or they can you know surround the location of infection or pathogen or whatever okay so, from here what we will do after explaining this, we will talk about the role of these individual WBCs and why they got this different name, why we called eosinophil, why we called basophil, why we will call neutrophil. Okay. So, the genesis and their then some informative stuff that what is the general number you see. So, whenever you see a, a blood report you should be able to you know figure out whether eosinophil has gone up or basophil has gone down and whatsoever and so on and so forth. So, now let us get back to the details of some of the these different cells. Okay. Okay. So, we will first start with neutrophil. Neutrophils are bigger than others and basically 50 to 70 percent of the total WBCs of the total WBC is neutrophil. Okay. So, these are basically the if you break this word this neutro means they are neutral neither they are acidic or neither they are basic they are chemically neutral. So, basically you cannot stain them neither with an acidic dye or a basic dye. Why there are dye? So, this is something just slightly of the a I am digressing. So, whenever these dyes works because most of the like almost pretty much the whole biology depends on dyes imaging you have to image it when you see something you believe it if you do not see you will not believe it. So, the biology over the years have evolved have dependent enormously on imaging it has dependent enormously on different dyes different fluorophores different chromophores and everything. So, these chromophores fluorophore dyes they work with very simple basic principle if there is a basic component the acidic dye will go and bind if there is acidic component a basic dye will go and bind okay. or if there is a neutral thing then you needed a neutral dye. So, since these cells are neutral in nature they do not they I mean chemically they are kind of neutral all their 
So, it is really tough to stain them with any basic or acidic dye and but mind it these are probably the biggest one all of, among all of them and they are in highest number. Okay. One second let me get back to the okay. So, this is basically they look more like this if you if you see them they will be like you know. So, this is pretty much how they look like okay. and uh, they support in different kind of they have several functions. Okay. They are highly mobile this is one of their feature they are highly mobile in nature and they are the first one they are generally the first one to reach the injury site to reach the injury site. So, in other words they are the first one which uh, who basically reach to the site and the first thing they do they engulf all the bacteria they have a tendency to engulf the bacteria inside them which I was showing you one time like you know they go to the site like this and, and if this is the bacteria which is sitting there which has to be engulfed. So, what they will essentially do they will just take it take it inside them like this and then they will destroy it and they destroy it using different chemical means I will come to that. So, they do it by sometimes by hydrogen peroxide and all those things. So, <coughs> they secrete they have granules which secrete hydrogen peroxide and kind of destroy destroy these different bacteria. Okay. So, this is one of their major function then next come eosinophil. Eosinophil got its name because it binds to eosin dye okay, and which is dark red in color and it is basically acidic in nature. And if you see it under the microscope then eosinophil will look red all over the red 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 because the eosin is red and it is acidic in nature that is why it is called eosinophil eosin dye. So, they just like the neutrophil they are also of the same kind they have the tendency to engulf go to the site of infection site of injury engulf the pathogen or surround the cell or damage cells or something and you know destroy it chop it down by engulfing it inside their body they are huge. Okay. They are smaller than neutrophil, but they are significantly big. Then comes the next one, which is called a basophil. Why it is called basophil? Because, as the name indicates, okay. As the name says, these are called basophil. They bind to a basic dye. This is the tendency. That's why they are called basophil and these are approximately 8 to 10 micron big whereas, eosinophil I just uh, they are of the same uh, same order, but slightly smaller than the uh, basophil. Okay, these basophil are the basically the way they look like they will look mostly in a blood smear if you look at it they will look more like pink color. Okay, this is how they look under the microscope if you kind of see them. Okay. So, these have the tendency they contain histamine and heparin which prevent blood clotting we have talked about this. So, these basophil contains heparin and, uh, and the histamines. So, the heparin as I we have already talked in the clotting they are anti clotting agents they prevent they help in preventing clotting. So, in other words they ensure the viscosity of the blood remains constant and talking about histamine histamines are the molecules which are secreted whenever there is an inflammation in the body. So, if you see some people take 
drugs like antihistamines. Antihistamines are given to ensure that those inflammatory, these are mostly cytokines, histamines. So, these histamines, so whenever there is an inflammation, there is some, say for example, somebody have asthma, the histamine level goes up or some kind of attack of pathogen histamine level goes up. So, sometimes antihistamines are giving and these histamines are secreted by this basophil cells. Okay. From here we move on to the next one which is called the monocytes. Monocytes are approximately 15 micron in diameter, which is essentially two times the diameter of RBC, two times greater than the diameter of the RBC. Okay. And these remains approximately for 24 hours in the blood vessels and that is pretty much and they also follow the same function as followed by the neutrophil, they reach to the site, they engulf the cells and they destroy it. Okay. So, these different cells contain different kind of granular structures, some contains peroxide granules, which is the neutrophil, some contain histamine granules, then heparin granules and they have different roles in clotting, in defense. Some of them contain peptides like defensins, neutrophil actually contain defensins. These are small peptide help in the defense mechanism. So, all of them are equipped, the arsenal of our immunity is equipped with wide range of small molecules and they have complementary role to play whenever our system is under threat from any kind of pathogen, which is continuously. We are continuously under threat from the surrounding pathogen and these different molecules, these small molecules which are contained and which are being synthesized by these, by these soldiers, blood soldiers of our body. They are continuously start responding to these different changing environmental surrounding and based on that they act, they secrete these different compounds to help us to survive. From here, so we talked about all the four different WBCs of the myeloid origin. Now, we will move on to the lymphocytes, which are from, from the other root, from the lymphoid origin. So, among the lymphocytes, they form but the lymphoid origin they form the lymphocytes. The lymphocytes could be classified into three groups. Okay. Coming to the lymphocytes, lymphocytes, okay. Let me save it. Okay. So, lymphocytes are classified to T cells, B cells, and natural killer cells. or N K cells sometimes, in short they are called N K cells. Okay. So, the T cells are also called cell mediated immunity, I will come to that very soon, the cell mediated immunity okay. and B cells are called are responsible for humoral immunity. And natural killer cells are responsible for immune surveillance. Surveillance, immune surveillance. Okay. So, in other words, what is happening is these T cells, which are involved in cell mediated immunity, these cells just like the neutrophil, basophil, eosinophil, monocytes move to the site of infection and at that site they multiply could you know surround the cells or they 
secrete certain compounds, which will ensure that the pathogen gets destroyed, or they activate the other WBCs of the myeloid origin, which are reaching. So, it is mostly a direct cellular, cellular action at the site or on the pathogen, that is why it is called cell mediated immunity. Yet, there is another one, which is called humoral immunity. Humoral immunity is, there are a section of cells or lymphocytes, which secrete something called antibodies. That is where it starts the whole origin of antibodies. These antibodies go and of course, they do the same thing, just like other chemicals does, but this antibody lead to the whole concept of vaccine development. What does that mean? So, that essentially means that say for example, you are attacked by a pathogen for the first time. So, your body will of course, fight it out and during that process, those B cells will generate some antibodies in your body, which will fight against that specific pathogen. Fine. So, first time the pathogen attacked, okay, you are ill for some days and then you know the B cells and along with B cells along with T cells, N K cells and um, the whole myeloid uh, W B Cs handle the situation but the body remembers it. How it remembers? Because in your blood titer, there are very small number of those B cell antibodies, which are present against that x y z pathogen. So, next time when it attacks, they are much more well equipped. It is just like you know attack first time, somebody beat you first time. So, you know the okay, next time you know how to handle this individual. So, now the body is in a strategically much more sound position to handle it. So, that is why they say that you know you should fell ill at times, especially in your childhood, little bit here and there sneezing, coughing and we should not give antibiotics or anything, because you develop your immunity. Let your B cells continuously you know charge up the system. So, you are always charged up. Okay. So, you know you have that memory. So, you know next time when it happens, you can fight it out. That form of immunity falls under this whole B cell or humoral immunity, where different antibodies are being formed and, and that is a whole subject in its own, the whole field of immunity and within immunity also humoral immunity is a, I mean like one of the very well explored and a very intense research is going on, on all these areas. Those are like kind of almost our lifeline you can call them, you know, because we are always at war. So, if you understand that how these antibodies are functioning, it could help us a lot. So, talking about this, I told you that this is the genesis of the whole vaccine is this. So, basically the whole idea is that. So, say for example, I wanted to create a vaccine. So, what I do, I take that pathogen x y z pathogen and I inject it into a system at a very, very low titer a very low concentration right means that is a very, very very low concentration. So, automatically it will spark up the production of the uh, B cell uh, antibodies. So, now your system is pre incubated to face the disease and that is where. So, so, for example, let me just uh, draw it that will make sense. So, say for example, here is an say let us take the example of say a uh, uh, one minute, let me. Okay, let's take an example. So this is an individual. Okay. Okay. Now what I do that I take, say for example, for disease X. It could be any disease. It could be chicken pox, or small pox, or whatsoever. Know. Disease X. So I want this person to get an immunity against disease X. So, what I will do when this individual may be very young or infant or at an older age whatsoever, okay. I, I know the pathogen for disease X okay. and I know the level say for example, X unit will cause disease. 
So, anything less than x unit, okay. So, less than x, fairly very, very less than x will not cause any disease, will cause, will, will not cause disease, okay. But this amount, which is say for example, equal to y, this amount is good enough to activate the B cells. Okay. So, what I do? I pick up this titer and inject it in this person. So, as soon as I inject it into this person, the B cells which are needed, the antibodies which are needed to fight against this disease, fight against this disease gets flared up. So, now in the blood vessel, in all his blood, those specific B X antibodies are, are present there. So, whenever this disease comes, this person is much more well equipped to fight against that disease. So, this is the whole game of antibodies and this is the whole genesis of the vaccine development where it all started and then rest is all history. Now, we all know there whenever a child is born, the child are given a lot of vaccine especially in the tropical countries which are most susceptible to the wide range of tropical disease for which several vaccines have been developed over the years. Okay. Starting from Kalajar to influenza and everything, there are a whole series of vaccines which are there. So, in other words, what you are doing, you are tweaking the system, you are just charging up this, it is kind of a charging mechanism, it is a very clever mechanism though. So, people are trying to find out vaccine for AIDS, which is currently one of them in the market. Okay. People are trying to find out vaccine against malaria, which is a very uh, terrible problem in the tropical countries and little bit of subtropical, but mostly in the tropical countries. Okay. So, up and little bit up and little bit down along the tropical rainforest. Okay. These are some serious, serious problems. Could we find this? So, vaccine, this is one of the hottest area where things are happening. These are kind of happening zones. Okay. Then you have the natural killer cells. These cells are, as I told you, these are surveillance they just roam just like a GPS, they are moving around, moving around, okay, there is a problem. They keep on chemotactically sending signals, immediately the whole army started moving into that site, okay, fine, you have to take care of it. So, after talking this about talking about all these different kind of uh, WBCs and everything, I wish to close in with uh, two aspects. The immunity could be classified in two levels. One is the intrinsic what we have in in head. So, say for example, some of the thing is that our skins they produce a lot of peptides. Okay, those are form of immunity. Okay, different structures of our body they prevent the entry of the pathogen. Those are immune our immune systems. So there are several molecules, several different kind. Of. So those are all falling under innate immunity. Okay those are all under the class, big classification of innate immunity. And yet, there is another form of immunity, which is governed by these antibodies, which is the other class. So, broadly speaking, immunity could be divided into innate immunity and the other form of immunity, which is governed by antibodies and the phagocytosis and all those kind of things. So, the major, so this though this is not part of it, the major uh, receptors which are involved in immunity are called toll like receptors TLRs in short form. This toll like receptor it is just like you have seen on highways you have this toll routes, toll booths where you pay and you move it just like that they are all over our body even including into the nervous system. These toll like receptors ensure something which has not paid the money should not enter. So, if pathogen is not going to pay a money to enter your system they try to you know they try to fool these toll like receptors and move into the system okay so these toll like receptors and all these falls under innate immunity and then comes the rest of the immunity which is covered by all these different kind of cells okay so this is the overall so this, though since this is not part of the part of this curriculum but I just to give you an idea how this immunity could be classified so that is a innate immunity and the immunity what I told you all these different kind of cells which are involved 
with humoral immunity, cell mediated immunity, and then immunity offered by this cells from the myeloid origin and everything. And you can you cannot really very when there is a zone where pretty much both the immune systems merge in that immunity. I mean there is a overlapping zone. Okay. So, with this I will close in on this and the next class what we will do we will talk about how the blood groupings are being done and how that affects in the childbirth. Okay. Thanks a lot.